All right. It was uh, October 14th, 2010. I'm in a courtroom. My husband is in front of me behind glass. The jury wasn't out for very long, which we weren't quite sure how to take. <laughs> the judge asked the jury, do you have a decision? Yes, Your Honor. We find the defendant guilty. I felt like someone punched me in the gut. I couldn't breathe. Our lawyers asked the judge, Your Honor, can Rich say goodbye to his wife? He should have done that this morning, he says. Bailiff, take him away. I scream. That moment changed my life forever. I was in shock. I was afraid. I was scared. But there was so much uncertainty. I didn't know what to do. I was angry. I was hurt. I was frustrated. And I felt helpless and extremely overwhelmed. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Like I kept repeating that. That statement would shape my thoughts and my actions and thus my reality for the next 10 plus years. Sorry, just bringing everyone in here. Um, so in an instant, I became a victim and I gave up control of my life and my body and my future and my goals and my dreams to fear and overwhelm and indecision. This event, this, this memory, when combined with all of my other, just letting everyone else in here, combined with all the other stories that I had of not being good enough and how nobody loves me, it shifted my mindset. It shifted my focus in life. It locked up my breath and it set my nervous system on high alert and it locked it there. And it put a pair of glasses over my eyes, glasses that were dark and gray. I was now hyper-focused on all my shit, all of my problems and whose fault all of my problems were. And spoiler alert, they were never mine. It was never my fault. It was everybody else's. When your nervous system gets locked on like that, the body starts to break down, guys. Digestion slows, sleep suffers, hormones are out of balance. Your stress tolerance is limited. You cannot handle making decisions or one more thing going wrong. Not to mention the toll this takes on your mental health. Chemically, as well as, as the stories progress and get worse, it makes us feel worse. Can you guys all hear me okay? I bet you didn't expect it to start like that. <laughs> so I want this to be interactive. I'm going to be asking questions. You all know how to find the chat, where the chat is. I want to know, type it in the chat. What is mindset? What does mindset mean to you? We, we hear a lot about mindset now. It's all over the place, especially as mental health is a thing right now. Mindset, mindset, mindset. But what even is our mindset? Put it in the chat. And your chat should be at the bottom of your Zoom. There should be like a more if you don't have all of them out there. But what does mindset mean to you? The way you perceive your reality, your dominant thoughts. So it's in perspective, conscious or unconscious. We got some, we got some good key players here, yes. <laughs> Friends, your mindset is just a set of beliefs that you hold to be true. It's how you see the world and it shapes how you think, what you feel and how you act. It actually ends up determining whether you're successful or if you fail. And how you do one thing is how you do everything. So how you approach your diet and losing weight is the same way you approach a business, it's the same way you approach relationships in your life or learning a new skill or a sport. So I wanna know, are you a number one or a number two here? Number one, are you the type of person that starts something and then you tend to get frustrated when you don't see the results that you expect. And you quit. Then there's shame and guilt that follow. So then we need our, all of our coping mechanisms, food, drugs, alcohol, sex, social media. Yes, I've done all of those. That's a number one. Number two, 
So you start something and then you hit a setback or a struggle or a failing point, but you keep going. You see that as just a, a road that dead ended and you know there's another road that's gonna go through. So tell me in the chat, are you a one or a two? Do you start things and then quit? Or maybe by now you start and stopped and start and stopped and start and stopped so many times that you don't even start anymore. That's a number one. Or are you a number two? You don't let failures or setbacks stop you. You know it's just a, a stepping stone to where you need to go. Two, one, 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 becoming a two, I love it. One on most things, one or two, yeah. I used to be a hardcore one and I've learned, I've changed, I've grown into becoming a two. Have you guys ever heard the saying, seeing the world through rose colored glasses? Drop a yes in the comments if you've heard, seeing the world through rose colored glasses. Yep, pretty common one. It's all about your perspective. It's about your beliefs. And here's what I need you to know. We don't see the world as it is. We see the world as we perceive it to be, as we believe it to be. And we all have different beliefs. And as humans, we like to assign meanings to things or our perspective, the way we see something, whether that's stories from our past, things people have said to us or tell us that we take a certain way, um, experiences that we've had in our past, or even other people's stories. Well, everyone else thinks X, Y, Z, so that must be true. And then we adopt their beliefs and their meanings. And it's these beliefs, these perspectives that dictate our daily habits, the actions that we take every day, which get us our results. I want you to write this down. If you guys don't have a pen and a paper, you're going to need a pen and a paper because we're going to play some language games and I'm going to be having you write some things down. When we write things, when you remember 30% of what you hear, 50% of what you write and 80% of what you teach, which is why I love being a coach and a teacher because it actually really helps me absorb and learn all of the things that I talk about. Here's what you're writing down. Thoughts to feelings to actions equals results. Thoughts to feelings to actions equals results. Your words, your thoughts, they create how you feel. They create your emotions. And we do everything for a feeling. We get dressed for a feeling. We choose people in our life for a feeling. We buy things for feelings. We do everything for a feeling. So how you feel leads to the actions that you take. And it's your daily habits and actions, the things you do consistently that get you your results. So it's thoughts to reality. We get stuck in life. We sabotage our own success, either in business or with our body or with anything, to remain consistent with our beliefs, with how we identify, with how we see ourselves. But you, you may not even be aware of what that is, what your identity is, what your beliefs are, because our subconscious mind controls this. It happens without us actually thinking about it. And these beliefs, these perspectives, they were formed usually from our childhood or from very traumatic and emotional events that we've had as adults. And then we spend our lifetime proving them to be true over and over again. We're gonna talk a little bit more about that later. So let me give you some examples here. You watched your mom struggle with her weight your whole life. She was always on a diet, talking about carbs and fats and how she tried everything and that's how life works. You get older, you get fatter, accept it. So this creates the story of it's hopeless. Why try to lose weight? It's not gonna work. Why start another diet? It's hopeless. Why try to give up alcohol and sugar? It's hopeless. Why finish this 75 hard that I started? It's hopeless. You don't even realize that this underlying reason that you start and stop and start and stop or quit, every program or diet or protocol that you've tried, it's because of this story that's so ingrained in you, it becomes you. Your stories run your habits. They run your actions every day without you even thinking about it. And so for you, maybe it's not your mom. You're like, dude, my mom was not that. She was totally cool. For you, maybe it was diet culture. Maybe it's what we see in read in magazines, see on social media today. Or maybe you tried 
a couple diets once or twice, it didn't work. And now that's become your story. And now every little thing that you try and it doesn't work is proof that nothing works for you. Or maybe it's just simply you have a story of I'm not good enough or I'm not loved or nobody likes me. And that creates this feeling of a lack of security, a lack of love. And so now we need food as comfort. And so even though you know you shouldn't eat certain foods or do certain things, you just can't stay away. Because I know some of you are network marketers or will be watching the replay. Another example, you'll all relate to this because I did in the beginning too. So you've heard for years, everyone tells you, family and friends, network marketing is a scam. MLMs are pyramid schemes. No one likes network marketers. Now this is your story. This is your belief, your perspective. And so even though you've some, somehow got over that and, and joined a company and you're ready to go, this is your underlying belief. So when it comes time to sit down and work your business, oh, you got to do laundry. Oh, you know what? The kitchen is really dirty. I've got to put the dishes away. We procrastinate. Or maybe it's like, I have to learn everything first. That was me. I need to go through all the training before I can do anything. <laughs> We do this because we're afraid of what people are going to think about us. I mean, you're a network marketer after all, and nobody likes them. So you don't take action or you take action, but your belief shows up in your energy. It shows up in your conversations, the way you talk about things, uh, how you post. People feel that. So now you're not getting results. You feel like a failure. See, it's not working. Network marketing doesn't work. And eventually you quit. But there's another side to that. What if your belief is you see how much of an opportunity network marketing is? You've done your homework on the business model, on the products, the company. It really aligns with you. You believe in it. The products have helped you, and you know how much they can help your friends and your family. You know what kind of an opportunity, what kind of a lifestyle this could give your friends that are struggling right now. Now you can't wait to do your work. Your content is so different because your energy, like, People feel that. You have conviction because you believe it, which leads to your success, which validates what you're doing, and you keep going. Is this resonating with you guys? Drop a heart in the comments or a yes in the comments if, if this is landing here. Yep. Yes. Awesome. In any given moment, we are telling ourselves a story. I can't, I'm not good enough. I'm lazy, I'm ugly, nothing ever works for me. I've tried everything. Everything always works against me. I'm not lucky, I'm not that kind of person. I'm broken, my body's broken. I have digestive issues, that was mine. My hormones are out of balance. Like all of these are stories that we're telling ourselves. But those stories, they create a feeling. And I know I'm repeating myself, it's on purpose. We learn through repetition. The way you feel, it either empowers you, you feel brave and courageous, you're gonna take very different action, or it disempowers you. You feel like a fa failure, you're not, you don't succeed. It's hopeless, why try? Start and stop, you start and stop, or you wish you could start, but you never do. Thoughts to feelings, to actions equal results. When I understood this, this formula, it changed my life because my thoughts were so bad. I bet you think your thoughts are bad. I guarantee you mine were just as bad, if not worse. Like we all have the same thoughts. And if you're, you're getting this and you're starting to understand, you're starting to realize like how we get stuck, how we stay stuck. And we'll get to solutions later. But we stay stuck because we have the same thoughts every day. 90% of our thoughts every single day are the same. So that leads to the same actions, except you expect different results. You expect to think the same, to talk to yourself the same, to not love yourself the same, but somehow for the result to be different. And when it's not, you beat yourself up for it. Instead of trying to force different actions, force yourself to go to the gym, force yourself to eat better, Force yourself to get out of bed in the morning. Rather than forcing, you need to change your thoughts, your stories, your words. And that should feel really empowering because who's in control of your words? Type it in the chat. Who's in control of your words? Uh, 
I like that row. Counter your negative thoughts with three positive thoughts. Yep. Yeah, me, you are, you're in control of your words. So your mindset is a set of beliefs that you hold to be true. But what isn't mindset? Your mindset isn't fixed. It's not a way of being that you cannot change, guys. You can change your mindset. And this is really important to understand because it means that if your current way of thinking, if your habits, if your actions, if the results that you have, if that's not serving you, guess what? You can change that. So right now I want to play a little game because I want you to actually feel what I'm talking about. I want you to feel how your words impact you. And this is a fun way to do this. So, and even if you're watching the recording, play along. And if you've done this with me before, do it again because we learn by repetition. So we all should on ourselves from time to time. I should work out more. I should drink more water. I should call my mom. I should read more. I should have a morning routine. I should go to bed earlier. I should do that reset thing Jen's doing. <laughs> what is your should statement? What's the thing that you tell yourself? And I'm going to want you to write this down, but I'm going to ask for two or three volunteers. If you don't volunteer, I'm going to pick you. Um, to share their should statement. So write down what is your should statement? And does anybody volunteer want to share with the group? Oh no, awesome. Go ahead and unmute. Thank you. Hi, Hi Jen. Jen. Hello. Hi, Jen and hi, everyone. What My is should... your should statement? I should be a better stepmom. How does that feel to say? It, it feels like I'm trapped. Yeah. Good. I'm going to come back to you. Okay. Who else would like to share? Christy, you want to share? iPhone. Who's on iPhone? It's Vin. I just lately joined, so I didn't have time to set up an account. Hi, oh, no yeah. worries. Hey, Vin, what is your should statement? Um, I should definitely spend more time worrying about me and not other people. I let my my personal health fall back sometimes in effort to put like my friends and family first. Okay. So let's call it, I should spend more time worrying about me. Yeah, that sounds more succinct. Perfect. All right, I'm gonna come back to Linnell, unless Christy, you really wanna go, there's gonna be another opportunity. And you know, I'm gonna call on you next then, so. <laughs> uh, so we're gonna go back to Linnell. I want you to change that should to could, and then read your statement. So everybody on your should statement, cross out the word should and put could. And then read that for us, Linnell. I could be a better stepmom. How does that feel to say? I actually don't like it. <laughs> Why? Because to me, it it's still undermining. The truth is, is I can and I and I choose to be. You're getting ahead. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you're fine. You're totally fine. That's awesome. Um, and this is words like we all feel differently with certain words. I'm not here to tell anybody what word is better than another. I'm here to ask you, like pre present options and then ask you, how does that feel to say? So for Linnell, could actually felt worse than should. Vin, I want you to read your could statement. Um, I could spend more time on me. How does that feel to say? Um, validating so better than the should statement yeah yeah should is like uh it feels kind of like sad in a way and like woe is me and the other way is uh more of a uh taking it back kind of sentiment yeah i like it getting more power back yeah for sure we got a couple more here so we're gonna go back to lynn now we're gonna cross out could and i want you to write 
can, which you already did. <laughs> but go ahead and read. So everybody cross out could now, and I want you to put can in there. And hopefully you're reading this to yourself too, and really feeling how it feels to say as we make adjustments to each of these sentences. So Linnell, can you read your can statement for me? Sure. I can be a better stepmom. And how does that feel to say? I, I feel peace with it. Awesome. Much better than should. Very much. Should <laughs> creates pressure, guys. And I don't know about you, but I don't like to operate under pressure. In fact, when somebody tells me what I should do, I want to do the exact opposite. It's like, oh, yeah, watch me. Like, I just have that personality. Vin, can you read your can statement? I I can spend more time on me. That feels How does that good. feel for you? Feels good. Yeah. We got one more. We got one more here, guys. So I'm going to come back to Linnell. We're going to add a reason. We're going to add a plus because. So you're going to have your I can, your statement plus, or, um, I'm sorry, I can, your statement because, and add a reason. I can drink more water because I feel better when I'm hydrated. We get a 30% more buy-in when we add a reason. It doesn't even matter what the reason is. Just by having a reason, there is two flies in this van and they are determined to come right into my face on this Zoom. <laughs> so cross out, uh, so add a plus because, add a because to the end of your can statement. Linnell, can you read that for us? Yes, I can be a better stepmom because I love and care for my husband and our children. How does that feel to say? Awesome. <laughs> Much better. Do you think you would take different action with a statement like that than I should be a better stepmom? Totally. Yeah. Why? Because it, it feels empowering. Like, there's a sense of power that comes with it and a sense of hope. Hope. When we feel hopeless, do we take action? No. Like, why? It's hopeless. I never lose weight. Nothing ever works for me. If things, if the situation is hopeless, why try? Change is hard. Why go through the hard effort if it's hopeless? And our language can make us feel hopeless or it can make us feel empowered, as you just found out. Vin, what's your can plus because statement? Um, I can spend more time on me because I matter. How does that feel to say? Validating. How can you spend more time on you? Um. I haven't, well, What's like a little thing, thing you can do. I guess a little thing is getting back into my skincare. I used to wash my face every single day, twice a day, and I haven't done that in a long time. <laughs> because I know you live in a van. Where is yeah. your skincare? Um, it's right next to my sink in my uh, okay. little kitchen area. So is it out? So you see it? Yeah, I see it every day, Jen. <laughs> okay. So what can we do to to help that habit. Can you set an alarm on your phone? Is there a particular time that you like typically get ready for yeah. bed? Yeah, there is. There is a specific time that I typically get ready for bed. So set an alarm. We, ha we all have cell phones these days. Set an alarm on your phone that just says like skincare time and add a bunch of fun emojis, something that when it goes off and maybe put a fun song to it. When you yeah. see it, it makes you feel good. Yeah. So when you feel good, you want to do good. And now you're caring for yourself. And that changes everything. Yeah. For sure. Jennifer said in the comments, it feels like more of a choice than a chore. Absolutely. It's not something yeah. you have to do or should do. You want to do it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I feel like the person in the comments is really correct. It, after a while, it, it almost starts to feel like a chore. Like, uh, I'll lay down and I'll forget. And I'll be like, ah. And then I just won't do it the next day. And the day after that, and it just becomes easier to not do it after a few days yeah but if we remember that why we want to do it is because we love ourselves and we're we want to we want to put ourselves first and take care of ourselves yeah it creates more of a desire to want to do that yeah for sure 
Awesome. Thank you, Linnell. Thank you, Vin. So like I said, should creates pressure. These words are language. It really shapes how we feel, which leads to the actions that we take. And I'm going to say that a lot because it's important and I really want it to, to sink in. Who here has heard of the victim mentality? And I might push some buttons with this. Yeah, I'm gonna read the definition. And if you want to write it down, I'm actually gonna read it twice. I'll read it slower the first time and then uh, a little faster the second time. The victim mentality is an acquired personality trait where a person tends to regard himself or herself as the victim of the negative actions of others, even in the absence of clear evidence. The victim mentality depends on a habitual thought process and attributions. I'm gonna say it one more time. I actually have this memorized. The victim mentality personality trait where a person tends to regard himself or herself as the victim of the negative actions of others, even in the absence of clear evidence. The victim mentality depends as in it has to have a habitual thought process and attributions. Habitual thought process, guys, our thoughts are habits. I said, like our thoughts are repetitive. We have the same thoughts day in and day out. And most of them are automatic. Attributions are like characteristics, like the breath, which we're gonna talk more about today. Why is the victim mentality so addicting? And I'm asking, I want you to put it in the chat. Why is it so addicting to want to feel like the victim or feel like people are doing something to us? I've been in the chat. It's easier to blame others than to take responsibility. Accountability. 100%. Don't have to take accountability. Easier to blame others. We got that one. <laughs> responsibility. Anger or indignation feels way better um, than helplessness. It's easy and we're used to it. Yes. All of that, all of the above. Playing the victim, being the victim, it takes away responsibility. Of course you can't work out, you hurt your shoulder. I'm sorry the doctors can't fix you and find what's wrong. I guess you're just gonna have to remain sick and stuck until they do. We crave attention and we don't get attention when things go right in our life. In fact, that person is probably annoying. We don't like the person that's always happy and positive. And that's not necessarily everybody, but if you are in a place where things, you are so focused on everything that's going wrong, then the person that seems like everything's going right, that person's annoying. And we don't get attention to that. We get attention when people feel bad for us, when they can empathize with us. Our words and our language are inflamed. Just like how you hear inflammation in the body's not good, it's not good for our language either. Thoughts like, life's not fair. I can't believe she did that to me. I can't believe he did that to me. I can't believe they did that to me. I've tried everything. Nothing ever works for me. I never win. Everyone else is better than me. Everyone's prettier than me. No one loves me. I'm lazy. I can't do anything right. Why can't I just follow through? These thoughts, they keep us stuck because it takes away our responsibility and our ability to change our own situation. When that happens long enough, we get to that helpless and hopeless place where we don't even try anymore. And where do these thoughts come from? Where do those stories come from? Our past, stories, perceptions, belief that, beliefs that we've adopted, highly emotional events that we've had as an adult. Those can create these stories, these words, these thoughts. We assign meaning to things and then we look for proof of that. As a kid, maybe you totally bombed a presentation in school and you were made fun of. The kids were laughing at you. 
And you made that mean you're not good enough. I suck. Everyone will make fun of me. Now, as an adult, you struggle at work with projects, being confident to speak up in a meeting, ask for what you want, or even in a relationship. You have the same um, fears, same uh, lack of confidence. Or maybe your parents got divorced and you made that mean that you are unlovable. And now you struggle with relationships in your adult life. We all assign our own meanings to things too. So you can have two kids grow up in the same household and have two totally different outcomes, two stories, two different meanings. When I decided, because it was a moment, when I actually decided I was going to live in a van, when I decided to do van life, I instantly started to see every van, RV, camper, campground, trailer, everything that was around me. Roads that I'd driven down for years, never saw a campground. I was like, oh shit, hey, there's a campground there. It's been there the whole time. I would see RVs parked in everybody's parking lot or everybody's driveway. Guys, there's a part of your brain called the reticular activating system, RAS. And it's responsible for what you see. So there's a billion pieces of information your brain is trying to take in at any moment. And your brain can't possibly take all of those in. So it only focuses on what you tell it is important. And it deletes all of the rest. That's how you cannot see a campground every time you drive down a street until you tell your brain it's important. And then all of a sudden you see it. It's not that it wasn't there. Your brain just didn't take it as important. And so it never paid attention. Have you guys ever bought a new car and then all of a sudden you see that car everywhere? Like when I was looking at Mustangs, all I saw were Mustangs. They're everywhere. That's the reticular activating system. It works with our thoughts. When your thoughts are, I have digestive issues. I have digestive issues. I have digestive issues. And I use this because this was my story, my identity. Guess what I got more of? Digestive issues. The more emotion, the more strongly we emotionalize something, the harder we fixate on it. And the more you keep it in your life. And the longer you do that for, it becomes your identity. So for me, with my digestive issues, I was so focused on it. I had notes about it. I analyzed everything I put in my mouth and every symptom. Why can't I get better? And for 10 years, I went through that cycle where nothing changed because my brain was proving to me that I have digestive issues. Tony Robbins says, the strongest force in the human personality is the need to remain consistent with how we see ourselves, our identity. This is self-sabotage. Your identity is, I never lose weight. So no matter how much you try, you end up right back where you started because your body's like, that's not us. We don't go to the gym and eat healthy. We're back here. That's our identity. This feels wrong. It starts with our thoughts. Anyone feel this with their weight or their health or their career? It works with all of it. Put it in the chat. Give me a whoop, whoop, hands up. This is the work I've been doing for years with clients, helping them look better, feel better. And I used to do it by trying to get them to force change their habits. Come to the gym, eat differently, do these things. I'm here to tell you guys, you will not change your habits or your actions with the same old thoughts and the old stories that you have running because that's the program. When I say abracadabra, what do you guys think of? Put it in the chat. Abracadabra. Magic. Yes, magic. Abracadabra. Do you guys know what that means? It's Aramaic. Abracadabra means with my word, I create. With my word, I influence. Definition of a spell. A spell is a word or combination of words of great influence. Guys, our words cast spells, like real life spells. They have great influence over us. Your parents casted spells. Did they or did they not have great influence over you growing up? Your words, the language that you choose, it influences four things. 
Number one, your imagination, how you see things, your perception. Number two, it influences your feelings and your emotions. It makes you feel empowered. I can do this. I've got this. Keep going. Or it makes you feel uh, uh, shame, guilt. I can't do it. Frustrated, overwhelmed. Number three, it affects your breathing. Our language, when it's inflamed, how can I get over this? Nothing works for me. It keeps us in this stress state. And that locks our breath up in our chest, which creates a lot of shoulder issues. Anyone hear me talk about my shoulder issue lately? It upregulates us. It locks and it traps our breath. We can't breathe deeply, relax. The last thing, number four, it affects our physiology. So again, our language keeps us locked in this stress response, which means digestion doesn't work which means our hormones um, go out of whack. It means increased inflammation. It means your metabolism suffers, your thyroid suffers. It has physical effects on your body and your language is with you all the time. We're in and out of maybe financial stress. We're in and out of relationship stress. We have a fight with our boss and then it's over, but your language is there every single day. The way that you talk to yourself in your head, the things you feel like you're capable of is with you every single day. Day. And it's either keeping you in a stressed state or it's allowing you to relax. And good luck trying to lose weight when your body's out of balance like this, when digestion's off or hormones are off or thyroid is off. Or be creative, start a business, dream, set goals, achieve what you want in life. So time for solutions. So we're well aware of the problems. We all know that our thoughts create our reality now. Focusing on our problems only brings more problems. We want to focus on solutions. So if our thoughts, if it starts with our thoughts, how do we change our thoughts, our words? And I'm going to give you just some really easy, good places to start. You can start them today. They're all free. They're all available to you. Awareness is number one. You all felt what a, it, a difference it made moving from should to can plus because. Bring awareness to how you're speaking to yourself. What, are, what do you say every time you pass a mirror? For me, it used to be, oh, I'm so fat. Look at my this, look at my that. Nitpick every body part. Do you have to go to the grocery store or do you get to go to the grocery store? What words are you using and how does it make you feel? Gratitude. This was my gateway drug to changing my thinking. Taking a few minutes every day, guys, to find the things that you're grateful for right now, no matter how shitty things are, no matter what's going on, what can you be grateful for in your life right now? Because it shifts your focus. That RAS I talked about, instead of searching and seeking all of your problems, it will start to search and seek for all the things you can be grateful for. And you've got a lot to be grateful for. It calms us down when we feel grateful. It brings you into the present moment. And that's where we make better decisions, where we think more clearly, we can see solutions. When you feel grateful for what you already have versus uh, feel a lack for what you don't, it's an energy. And like attracts like. You draw more of that positive energy to you. Or you're drawing more negative energy to you. This is where we get the, like, it comes in threes, when it feels like something's going wrong, everything's going wrong, it becomes an energy, a vibration. And I'm going to get a little woo-woo on you. <laughs> so meditation is the next one I have. How many of you guys do any kind of meditation? I'm curious. Any meditators here? Put in the chat, show of hands a little bit. Some? Yeah, a little bit. Nope. Uh, meditation took me a while to get into because honestly, I thought it was too woo woo. Like that wasn't me. I was not, that was hippies do meditation. I was not a hippie. And I kept hearing about it and hearing about it and hearing about it. And in fact, all of the things that I'm talking to you right now were things that I would hear. And I was like, that's not going to help me. That's not what I need. I need the diet. I need the supplement. I need the test that's going to show me what's wrong. But these are the things that made the biggest impact because it shifted how I felt while things were still really bad. And that changed my actions. Trying to force my my actions to change didn't work. 
meditation helps us slow down. If our thoughts are keeping us stuck in this fight or flight, you may not be able to be aware of your thoughts because you're stuck in this um, up regulated state. Meditation helps us slow down so that we can be aware. You can't be aware if you're living in the past or you're worrying about your future or you feel rushed or overwhelmed. We don't make good decisions in those places. There's a great quote that says, you should sit and meditate for 20 minutes a day, unless you don't have the time and then you should meditate for an hour. And that is so me because for the longest time, I was like, I don't have time to meditate today. I don't have time to meditate today. But when you're so anxious and pressure and you feel like you don't have time, that's when you make mistakes. Everything takes you longer to get done. You can't think about anything. And so it takes you longer. Whereas if you took the hour to meditate and you brought yourself into a more calm, relaxed state, you'd be surprised at how much work you can get done, how much more you get accomplished. Breathwork is the same way. There's lots of different tools for breathwork, lots of different breathing techniques, um, but breathing drills help you shift into a more calm, relaxed state where you can be aware of your thoughts, aware of what's going on, make better decisions. And affirmations. So affirmations is the newest one in my arsenal. And I used to really poo-poo affirmations. Again, too woo-woo, too heavy for me. But now that I understand how our thoughts shape our reality, I feel completely different about them. Affirmations are like planting seeds in the garden of your mind, your subconscious mind. So you're planting a seed that you want to grow. So for me personally, really recently, I've been working on my money story. And I've been listening to a lot of money affirmations. I'm grateful for my money. I'm grateful for the money that's on its way to me. I'm rich. I'm great. Uh, I have, when I pay my bills, everything, um, I have plenty left over. The last two were really hard for me because my brain instantly went, no, you're not. That's not you. You're lying. But I stayed with it and I really latched onto the ones that felt good. Like the, um, I am grateful for the money that's on its way to me. Totally grateful for the money that's on its way to me. And the more I did it, the better I felt. And I started to feel even more grateful for every sale, for every opportunity that I got. And I felt more successful. And when I felt more successful, it encouraged me to take more action. Right? Since I started doing these money affirmations, and it hasn't been that long, I hit the highest rank I ever have with my company, Modere. I've added someone to my team. I put this webinar out there. Here we are, which can I tell you how long has it been on my to-do list? And I had all the reasons why I couldn't. I didn't have time, da, 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 whatever. Something else always came up. And I'm way more consistent with my actions. I'm showing up differently. And it's because of these seeds that I'm planting. And now when I say I am rich, my brain doesn't go, no, you're not. It goes, yes, you are. Number one, rich doesn't necessarily mean money. And number two, I know it's going to happen. I believe it in my core. And when you find that kind of belief, it's only a matter of time before it, it draws into your life and it happens. So I want to play another game here. Uh, I want to I play a game that's going to show you another way how your language can help you get unstuck. Does everybody have their can plus because statement? So I'm going to pick on different people this time. Christy, you know it's coming. <laughs> can I call on you to read your can plus because statement? Well, I have a hundred, but the one that I wrote down, uh, I said, I could lean out because I feel better about myself when I'm leaner and I could be a better athlete. And did that feel better than your should statement? Well, it just feels like, um, well, I mean, yes, should, should is not very action oriented, right? Like should is like, yeah, I should, but I also could not. <laughs> so how does it feel to read your can statement? I don't know. It just feels more action oriented. Does it feel good? Um, uh, Let me ask you this. It doesn't feel Did bad. It just is like another thing that I should be doing. Yes. I should be doing? <laughs> yes. Did, did your could statement 
feel better than your can statement? No, they feel equal. I mean, um, like, you know, cognitively, yes, I know they're different, but they feel the same. Okay, that's totally cool. So pause, I'm going to ask one more person to read their can plus because Jennifer, can I call on you to read your can plus because statement? Okay, yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> I have a million as well, but you know, one thing that's been on my mind is, is my job and the, the stress and, and whatnot. And I've been considering uh, promoting Modair as well. Um, but I've got, you know, a gazillion things going on in my life. So it's like, you know, I, I should do it. And then what was your question? <laughs> I just want you to read your can plus because statement. Okay, I can. I, I can promote my dare because it can make me more independent. It can you know, help me, you know, leave the job that I'm not as happy with and kind of cut ties with the, you know, the corporate world. And how does that feel to say? Freeing. Mm, oh, I love that. <laughs> All right, we're going to come back to Christy. Christy, I'm going to have you read your can plus a because statement again, except I want you to add a maybe in there. At the end? And it, add a may, maybe in that sentence where it fits in. I can, I can maybe, maybe lean out. <laughs> what does that feel to say? <laughs> That's the same as a should. Ah, takes us backwards. Yeah. Uh, Jennifer, add a hopefully to your statement. Hopefully? Somewhere in your sentence. Okay. If it's not grammatically correct, we won't ping you. <laughs> um, I can promote Modere because it can hopefully make me more independent. You hear how it goes up like a question? Maybe. Yeah. How does that feel to say when you say that? Um, not as reassuring or confirming. Worse. I made it worse. Everyone write these down. So get out a, a new sheet of paper. I want you to write these words down five times bigger than you normally write. And if you don't wanna write it down now, I also, I'll send you, um, I have a PDF that you can grab either on my Instagram bio or I'll send it with a replay as well that has these words listed. But let me read them for you here. Might. Guess. Maybe. Could. Almost like. Sort of, kind of, probably, feels like, should, there's that one, uh, perhaps, one day, hopefully, possibly, Potentially, and the mother of all soft talk words, try. These soft talk words, we call them soft talk. It undermines our confidence. It creates indecision, a lack of clarity, lack of focus. It creates overwhelm and it gives you an out. I didn't say I'd go to the gym, I said I would try. It confuses your brain. Your brain doesn't know what to do, so it doesn't take you seriously. It's why you can't commit to things. So what I want you to do is I want you to take this piece of paper, put it somewhere you're gonna see it every day. Bathroom mirror, regular mirror, hallway, in your car, somewhere where you will see it every day so that it, those words register in your brain. I want you to reduce your use of them. So seeing the words will help you be aware, become aware of when you use them. And I want you to really catch yourself when you use them and try to restate your statement. 
and see if it makes a difference. I'll try to drink more water. Ah, there it is. I'm going to drink more water. Which one seems more actionable? And can you do this for seven days? Or 30 days, even better. If you want to start feeling more confident, if you want to start doing the things that you say you're going to do, take these words out of your vocabulary and watch how it makes you feel. And we know that how we feel leads to the actions that we take. Awareness is the first step to change. Guys, my whole goal with this webinar was to open your eyes to maybe something that you might not have thought about before, uh, to empower you with the idea that if you aren't where you want to be, if you're not where you're where you're where you are with your body, if you're not where you want to be with your habits, your financial status, your relationships, you want these things to change. If what you've been doing continuously is not working, look at your words. What are the underlying stories that you keep telling yourself? And are they empowering you, making you feel like you can do it? Which are going to lead to one set of actions? Or do they disempower you, make you feel guilty, shameful, like you're a failure, which lead to a whole different set of actions? For over 10 years, after that moment that I opened this webinar with, my body, my nervous system was stuck in a state of shock. I didn't properly deal with those emotions. I didn't know how. I had chronic digestive issues, insomnia. My hair was falling out. I didn't have a period for 10 years, 10 years. I was severely depressed, coupled with anxiety. I was overweight. I was exhausted. I did not feel like myself anymore. It compounds. One symptom turns into another symptom. Those symptoms get louder until we get to this place where we just don't feel like ourselves and we give up because we don't know what to do. I wasn't the fun, spontaneous, outgoing, happy person that I used to be. And I honestly just chalked it up to this must be what it feels like to get older. And I accepted it. And don't get me wrong. There were happy moments, like it wasn't all doom and gloom. And I knew I wanted more out of life. I wanted things to change. I just couldn't get myself to stick to things that I knew I wanted to do. I was a trainer. I was telling people how to work their nutrition. And yet I was coming home on the weekends and binge eating ice cream and, and almond butter with a glass of wine. I mean, with a bottle of wine. And then wondering why the doctors can't fix me. For those 10 years, I worked on my physical body the way I knew how diet, exercise, I added stress management. I thought I was doing everything right. And I would make a little bit of progress and then I would, come, I would have a setback. I would make a little more progress, another setback. And then sometimes I would reg regress even worse than where I started. It wasn't until I started to work on my mental and emotional health that I saw real change. When I started to talk to myself differently, I faced the stories that were haunting me, that were creating these limiting beliefs. I forgave myself. And I started to really love myself. And it all started with someone telling me that it was an option. That there was another way, that I wasn't fixed, I wasn't stuck. It didn't have to be that way. And I'm here to tell you, there's another way. You have an option. You're not fixed. You're not stuck. You can change your reality. The work I do now with clients is the most rewarding work I've ever done. because I see the changes in them. In the one-on-one -on -one sessions that I do, I help you find, we find the places that you're stuck together. The stories that are limiting your potential, that are holding you back, that are creating these feelings that are creating the actions that you're taking that aren't working for you. We help you create space and clarity from them, releasing the power that they have over you and giving you control of your life back. So if you're feeling this and you want to explore a little bit more what one-on-ones can look like, I would love to have a conversation with you. Find out where you feel stuck and how I can help you. And I promise, my promise to you is you'll leave the call with one or two action steps that you can start doing totally free. I just want to have a conversation. Just reply to any email that I've sent. Um, you can message me on social. If you have my number, you can text me. I'll send you a calendar link and we can get that set up. Friends, I want you to let go of the past and become the person you are meant to be. This is my mission. And it starts with paying attention to how you talk to yourself and how that makes you feel. 
start paying attention to how you feel when you take some actions. Like the days that you make it to the gym and you eat healthy, how are you feeling? What's your emotions? And what are you telling yourself? Versus the days when you binge eat, throw everything away, I don't care. How are you feeling those days? What are the emotions? And what are you telling yourself that made you feel like that? Does anyone have any questions or comments? Well, you guys can keep watching my story unfold on social media right now. It's just on Facebook and Instagram because I love sharing and I'm just getting started. Maybe I'm an overshare, <laughs> um, but I will email out the replay to this. Um, to everyone who signed up, also the soft talk challenge. And I'm, I really would welcome your feedback, good or bad, the good, bad, the ugly, send it all. I, this is the first of many. I really want to make this better, make sure that it lands. Um, that it resonates. So I appreciate any feedback, comment. I appreciate you all so, so much for being here. Um, if there's no questions, that is what I have for you. Thank you so much. Much love, guys.